Hi, we're out on the range today, so please bear with gunfire you hear in the background. Recently, a lot of people, and when I say a lot, I do mean a lot. I don't mean one or two. A lot of people have contacted me asking to see a presentation on Caliber 44 Special. So here we are. And before we go any farther, let me show you a close-up of what 44 Special Ammunition looks like. From your left to right is 9x19, 38 Special, 357 Magnum, 44 Special, 44 Magnum, 45 ACP. The 38 Special and the 357 are the same diameter, but the 38 Special has a shorter casing, so it's one way interchangeable with the 357. However, the 357 is a newer, higher chamber pressure round, so although it's only slightly bigger than the 38 Special, it's significantly more powerful. The same concept applies to 44 Special versus 44 Magnum. They're the same diameter, the 44 Special is a slightly shorter casing, therefore it's one way interchangeable with 44 Magnum. However, the Magnum is a newer, higher chamber pressure round, so even though it's only slightly bigger than the 44 Special, it's a lot more powerful. So how much more powerful is 44 Magnum than 44 Special? I've got the chronograph set up at 7 yards and I have my Smith & Wesson Model 29 44 Magnum with a 6 inch barrel. And I have it loaded with Spear Gold Dot 44 Magnum 210 grain jacket at hollow point. Thirteen ninety nine, thirteen eighty seven, thirteen eighty one, thirteen fifty nine, and thirteen seventy one. Now I have my Model 29 loaded with Spear Gold Dot 44 Special with a 200 grain jacket at hollow point. Let's see how it compares. Seven sixty-seven. Seven eighty-four. Seven twenty-seven. 703 and 763. Now let's try a different type of ammunition. This is Hornady Custom 44 Magnum 200 grain jacket at hollow point. 1440. 1419. 1404, 1433, and 1420. Now let's see how that compares to the 44 Special version. Now I've got Hornady Custom 44 Special with a 180 grain jacket at hollow. 824 811 813 809 and 815 Now let's go crunch the numbers well, I crunched the numbers, and with the gold dot ammunition for 44 Magnum, I got a mean velocity of 1,361. 44 Special, 758. Now, this is a 210 versus a 200 grain projectile, so even with a bullet that's slightly heavier, we're still getting over 600 feet per second more velocity. Now, with the Hornady Custom ammunition for 44 Magnum, I got 1,423. For 44 Special, 814. This is a 200 versus a 180 grain projectile, so with a bullet that's 20 grains heavier, we're still getting over 600 feet per second more velocity, and that's a lot more. This does come with a couple of caveats, such as chronographs don't always agree with each other, and certain environmental factors like elevation and ambient temperature can affect chronograph results. 
Also, there's a segment of the population that thinks if you put 44 special ammo into a 44 magnum revolver, it'll shoot, but the numbers you get won't really be representative of what you have gotten in a true 44 special revolver. Really, the difference, if any, would be negligible. However, this 44 magnum revolver does have a 6 inch barrel, or 5 and 7 eighths if you want to be technical. And although 6 or even 8 inch barrels are very common on 44 magnum revolvers, these days, when someone's using a 44 special for security or concealed carry or personal protection, it's usually going to be some kind of snub nose revolver. So let's try this again with a revolver that may be more representative of what people are using. This Ruger GP100 44 Special with a 3 inch barrel, which I purchased with donations to the Patreon account. Thank you everybody. So let's go back to the chronograph with this gun and our 44 Special ammunition and see how our results compare. And we'll start with our Spear Gold dot. Seven twenty seven, seven fifty five, seven thirty four, seven fifty three, and seven thirty seven. Now let's see how that compares to the Hornady Custom. And now our Hornady Custom. 867. 805. 827. 853. and 863. Now let's go crunch those numbers. Well, I crunched the numbers and with the Spear Gold Dot ammunition, we saw that in the 6-inch barrel revolver, we got a mean velocity of 758. With a 3-inch barrel, it was 741, a loss of 17 feet per second. That's within the variation of one round to the next and not enough difference to make a difference. But with the Hornady Custom ammunition, we saw that in the 6-inch barrel revolver, we got a mean velocity of 814. With the 3-inch, it was 843. A gain of 29 feet per second? Not really. Ammunition will have a range of velocities, and it would appear that a couple of the rounds I fired out of the 3 inch barrel were near the top of that range. If I were to fire 5 more shots, I'd probably get a slightly different result. But either way, between the 6 and the 3 inch barrel, we've got a difference of 29 feet per second, well within the variation of one round to the next, and not enough difference to make a difference. But as always, these are just numbers on the page. How does that translate into effectiveness when we shoot this ammunition through this revolver at the intended target? Let's see if we can put that to the test. Now to test our effectiveness, we're going to use the meat target. And for those who haven't seen it before, it's leather jacket skin followed by pork chop pectorals, pork ribs, a bag of oranges to simulate lung tissue, more pork ribs on the back, four layers of t-shirt on the front, four layers on the back, and the whole thing followed by the new and improved high-tech fleece bullet stop. I also want to take a moment to discuss hearing protection and eye protection. Forgive the delay, but there are some people who are not very observant that keep asking about it. This is an earplug case. I wear earplugs with every shot I take. Earlier you saw me wearing earphones. For some calibers that are excessively loud, like 44 Magnum, I typically use earplugs and earphones. But since we're only going to shoot the 44 Special now, earplugs will suffice. Now as far as eye protection, I don't really consider it necessary when shooting paper targets or using the chronograph, but when I'm shooting something with a potential for blowback, like steel knockdown plates or cinder locks or the meat target, I will wear shooting glasses. However, I typically take them off before I get back on camera. Sometimes I'll see them sitting on the table. So now that we've covered that, let's get on with it. I'm going to shoot the meat target with our Ruger GP100 caliber 44 Special, and I have it loaded with Spear Gold Dot 44 Special 200 grain jacket at hollow point and I'll shoot from 7 yards. 7.30 Well, our pork chop pectoral has 44 caliber holes in it. Our ribs on the front have 44 caliber holes in them, where bullets hit a rib broke them. Ribs on the back have 44 caliber holes in them, where bullets hit ribs broke them. 
but let me show you a close-up of these projectiles. Here's our four rounds. We see moderate expansion on one and on the other three, minimal expansion. These results are really disappointing. Now we'll shoot from seven yards with our Hornady Custom 44 Special 180 grain jacket at hollow point. Well, I took the meat target apart and it has 44 caliber holes in it. But what's really noteworthy is, as where the spear gold dot projectiles were stopped by the t-shirt on the back of the target, the Hornady Custom projectiles penetrated some to the 20th, some to the 30th layer of fleece. So we see lackluster performance and over penetration. But what really made an impression is what condition these projectiles are in now. Let me show you a close up of them. I can only show you three projectiles because I dropped one in the snow and I couldn't find it, but it was in the same condition as these, and that condition is absolutely zero hollow point expansion. Now I'm going to try one more type of 44 Special Ammunition. This is Hornady Critical Defense. As where the Hornady Custom was a 180 grain jacket at hollow point, the Critical Defense is a 165 grain FTX projectile, like a ballistic tip. Let's see if this does any better. And it looks like we have a winner. We got some good holes in our pork chop pectoral. Our ribs on the front of the target have a lot of damage where bullets hit the ribs, shattered them. A lot of damage to our orange lung tissue. Our ribs on the back of the target have some impressive holes where bullets hit the ribs, shattered them. And all of our projectiles were stopped by the t-shirt on the back of the target. Now let me show you a close up of these bullets. And this one still has the red tip stuck in it, but what we see is very good expansion. There's a few more things to cover, and fair warning, this is the boring part of the video where I talk. And the big thing to cover is the question, why would someone choose to carry a 44 Special Revolver for concealed carry or personal protection purposes when there are so many other choices that would seemingly be better? This is a topic I could go on about for a couple of hours, but I'm going to try to condense it to just a few minutes. And there's two aspects to it. There's the 44 Special Revolver and the 44 Special Ammo, and I want to start with the ammo. As we saw, 44 Special is one-way interchangeable with 44 Magnum in the same way that 38 Special is one-way interchangeable with 357 Magnum. And why would someone choose to put the Special Ammo in their Magnum Revolver? I'm sure there's many reasons, but I want to cover just two of them. One is so you can go to the range and target shoot with ammunition that has a lot less report and a lot less recoil. In the same way that a lot of people will target shoot with 38 Special Ammo in their 357 revolver. However, in trying to use 44 Special for that task, there's a couple of disadvantages. As where 38 Special Ammunition is readily available, and most of the time significantly less expensive than 357, 44 Special Ammo can be hard to find, and is frequently more expensive than 44 Magnum. Now another reason someone might put special ammo in their magnum revolver is because they anticipate that that handgun might be used by a smaller, lighter, less experienced shooter who can really benefit from reduced noise and reduced recoil. I've had several men tell me that they carry a 357 magnum revolver loaded with 357 magnum ammo, but in a situation where they anticipate their wife might use the gun, they'll load it with 38 special ammo. Someone with a 44 Magnum revolver might do the same thing for the same purpose. Now, in the aspect of why would someone choose to carry a 44 Special revolver, that's a little more complex. And it starts with the ongoing debate between autoloaders and revolvers for concealed carry or personal protection. Now, that's a subject I've discussed ad nauseum on several occasions, so today I'm going to give a very abbreviated version of it. And it goes like this. Revolvers can have some advantages over an autoloader, but an autoloader has a lot of advantages over a revolver. An autoloader's flat profile can make it, for many people, easier to carry. Most autoloaders are going to have a shorter trigger pull than a double-action revolver, making them, for many people, easier to shoot more accurately. 
auto loaders typically have a significantly greater capacity. As where most revolvers have a five or six shot cylinder, auto loaders can have magazine capacities of 15 or more. And most of us can trade out magazines a lot faster than we can reload a revolver with speed loaders. So why would someone choose a revolver? There's many reasons. Again, let me cover just a few. One is that because some people with their financial situation or their local laws or things like that, a revolver is the gun they have. It's what they inherited, whatever. It's what they're stuck with. Another reason is some people do not trust themselves with an autoloader. They know the amount of training they have. They know the amount of training they're going to get. They don't trust themselves to remember to chamber around on an autoloader or remember to take the round out of the chamber or remember to engage a safety or disengage a safety and so on. They don't trust themselves with an autoloader, so a revolver is the right choice for them. Now there are some people who do not trust autoloaders. They consider them prone to malfunctions. Recently, someone who worked plain clothes security and carries a revolver was talking to one of my crew and he was saying he carried a revolver, which coincidentally was a 44 Special, not this model, but he said he carried the revolver because autoloaders can be unreliable. Now you may disagree with his opinion. I disagree with his opinion. Today's generation of autoloaders if properly loaded, properly maintained, are extremely reliable. But what we can't disagree with is the reality that that was in fact his opinion and that's what he's going to go with. So, if someone were to choose to carry a revolver, why would they choose to carry a 44 Special as opposed to something that might be a lot more practical? In comparing these two guns, the Ruger GP100 and the Ruger SP101, the 44 is a lot bigger and heavier than the 357. They're both five shot revolvers. The 357, because of its size and weight, is going to be a lot easier to carry. It's more powerful. The ammunition is more available and less expensive. Why would someone choose to carry a 44 Special? I'm sure there's many reasons, but I want to cover what I think are the top three. The first one being availability. The 44 Special just might be the gun that person has. It's what they inherited. It's the gun they have. The second reason is because 44 Special is a fairly low chamber pressure round and so it's not going to have the loud report that a 357 Magnum or a 44 Magnum will have. And there are some people who are very concerned about the potential for hearing loss in a self-defense shooting. Now what I mean is, in a self-defense shooting, you're probably not going to have time to put your earplugs in. And there are some people who are concerned that in the three, four, five shots they're going to be exposed to, they're going to have hearing loss. Now is that point valid? This takes a minute to explain. A while ago I was in a situation where I was sitting down and someone was standing up behind me shooting over my head with a 30-06 rifle. That was pretty loud and it made my ears ring. And with each shot the pitch of the ring changed. Ring, 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 ring! Did it damage my hearing? A couple of years after that, I had a hearing test, and my hearing was rated by their scale as H1. Well, the best you could be is H0. In the large group of people, there were only a few of us that had H1 and only one or two that had H0. So my hearing was considered pretty good. I'd have to say having 30-06 fired over my head didn't do any significant damage. And whatever damage it did pales in comparison to the thousands of rounds of 22 long rifle I've fired without hearing protection back before I was smart enough to do such things. The main cause of hearing loss is exposure over a period of time to ongoing noise, not acute exposure like one or two rounds of gunfire, unless of course that gunfire is a loud firearm right up close to your head. And even the hearing loss that I've suffered from gunfire still pales in comparison to the hearing loss I've suffered from driving hundreds of thousands of miles in cars with insufficient mufflers. So the point of view that we should be concerned about in our concealed carry gun, hearing loss due to being exposed to just a few rounds of very high chamber pressure ammunition, like 44 Magnum or 357 Magnum, may not have a lot of merit. And we may argue with their point, but again, what we can't argue with is the reality that they do believe that, and that's 
might be a reason why someone would choose a 44 Special. Now the third reason is something called intimidation factor. And everyone, please, before you send me any nasty emails, listen to this segment in its entirety. There's an idea that if you are a citizen with a concealed carry permit and you are accosted by a criminal, that you may just have to show a handgun and that will defuse the situation. Yes, happens all the time. But there are some people of the opinion that the type of firearm you have may enhance your ability to defuse that situation. This is something that some people call intimidation factor. I've heard people say that a stainless steel handgun will have more intimidation factor than a blued steel handgun. That a large handgun will have more intimidation factor than a small handgun. And there are some people of the opinion that a large caliber handgun with a large bore will have more intimidation factor than a smaller bore. Now is there any validity to that point of view? Let's put that in the guise of a hypothetical. Let's say you're going to the ATM, you're trying to get some money, someone comes up, shows you a knife, demands your money, instead you show them your handgun and tell them just walk away. In that situation, when you tell someone to walk away, they're either going to do that or they're not. If not, there's going to be a whole lot of factors that go into that. Time of day, is it light or dark? Are there witnesses around? How close are they to you? The list goes on at Astra. In my opinion, one of the biggest things on that list is, does that criminal really believe that you're going to shoot him if you have to? Now, there are some people that think if the gun you have has a very large bore, that you're more likely that that person's going to walk away. I think that might have some validity in comparison to a very small handgun, such as if you have a really little pocket 25 or one of those North American Arms mini revolvers and 22 long rifle, and you're trying to just show that handgun and defuse the situation, there are going to be some criminals that don't believe such a small gun is real. There are some people who think that really small calibers like 25 and 22 won't actually hurt you. There are some people who think that a 22 can't penetrate heavy clothing. I've actually had someone tell me that 22 long rifle wouldn't penetrate a leather jacket. Yeah, that's not correct. But there are people who believe that. And so with a very small handgun, you might reduce your ability to defuse the situation without gunfire. But is a 44 really going to enhance your ability over a 38 caliber revolver? I'd have to say the chances of that are at best minimal. I think the real thing that goes into that is the criminal's belief as to whether or not you would actually shoot if you had to. So we can, again, argue the point of intimidation factor, but what we can't argue is the reality that there are some people who believe a large caliber handgun has that intimidation factor over a smaller caliber. So put short, the reason someone might choose a 44 Special is that's what they have, that they're concerned about hearing loss, or they think it has intimidation factor. Now, is there any real bottom line to all of this? A couple of them. This Ruger GP100 revolver in caliber 44 Special is a big, robust, well put together, high quality firearm. It's got big, high visibility, adjustable sights. I love the size and shape of this grip. Yes, it does fit my hand better than this one does. But there are some real downsides to 44 Special. The availability of the ammunition, the cost of the ammunition, and the fact that it lacks power compared to some more conventional calibers. Now we have seen that with the right choices of ammunition it can be effective, but with the wrong choices it was really disappointing. And I would say the bottom line is, if you have a 44 Special and that's what you're going with because that's what you have, make sure you make the right choices in ammunition. But if you're looking for a handgun to buy, I would say there probably are a lot better choices out there. So as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the 44 Special video.